so things that appealed to me right away were, um, you know, it's this teenage kid, you know, this guy, rock and roll musician who liked to skateboard and chase girls, which was, you know, pretty much who I was. By, I, by the third day, he knew every single person on the set by name. He was just so gung-ho, and I mean, actually, you know, sort of matched Zemeckis' energy level. The big global idea is to have the audience invested in the character. So if you compare, say, a Jimmy Stewart-type character and compare a, a Marty McFly, Michael Fox, in a Back to the Future film, I think what you see is like, gosh, this is a teenager not that dissimilar from myself. Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. This is uh, where Ralph dresses up as a man from space. What do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. Yeah, well, I saw it on a rerun. You can look at It's a Wonderful Life, which is sort of a time travel story. And that works, even though, you know, I wasn't alive back in 1946, which is what it takes place. All movies that are timeless, if you will, or work even when they're dated, work because the characters are universal. 1955. Marty McFly is a very reactive character. You're my mom. You're my mom. My name is Lorraine. Lorraine Bates? But you're, uh, you're so, uh, you're so thin. And Michael was this kid, you know, with uh, all that, uh, all that excitement and uh, curiosity and, and energy. And I remember coming off of that very easily. It was the nature of Michael J. Fox that he brought good things out in everybody else, and he fed off of those good things that came out of that. 